Hey, I just want to say, I love fossil Pokemon. Sure, it's just Jurassic Park, but in Pokemon, you take an old fossil or literally just a bug stuck in some amber, that's like, like literally Jurassic Park's whole thing, and you inject life back into it to bring these ancient creatures into modern times. But it's still just so cool to see how Pokemon lived way back when. I love world building like this, but my favorite part about them is that they are very educational too. We've already gone into detail about every fossil Pokemon, explaining and teaching what they're based on and why they be how they do. And then we asked what if Alola had fossil Pokemon and why didn't it? And the same with Paldea, and y'all loved those, so let's do it one more time with the one remaining Pokemon region that didn't add any fossil Pokemon, Johto. What if Johto added Fossilmon? Well, first things first, we need to take a step back in time to back then. Fairy type didn't exist yet. Every fossil Pokemon in Gen 1 was rock type, and there wouldn't be an actual dinosaur fossil Pokemon until Gen 4, and I don't want to change that. So, we're already kind of limited. But also, Johto is mostly based on the Kansai region of Japan, which already poses a minor problem. Japan being so earthquake and volcano filled, and much of it only existing as land as far back as 11 million years ago, means that there aren't a lot of fossils there. In the few fossils, Fossils that are, well, like, there's a reason the fossil Pokemon in Kanto are Kabuto and Ammonite, which are based on sea creatures that happen to produce the most common fossils the whole world over. But actually, you'll also notice that the earlier generations of Pokemon didn't care so much about where the region itself was based. We're used to it these days, what with every Gen 8 Pokemon being British, and every Gen 9 Pokemon links back to the Iberian Peninsula, and even in Gen 7, every Pokemon is at least tropical, if not Hawaiian specifically, and heck, even a load of Gen 4's Pokemon are based on northern Japanese folklore and such, but Gens 1 through 3. Yeah, there was some, but that mostly just comes from them being Japanese-made games based in Japanese regions. So like, of course. This is to say that these Johto fossils are not going to be particularly Japanese, and there's a really cool bonus fact that led to this decision. You see, in the age of dinosaurs, much of Japan was still under the ocean, having not popped up yet, but also, that's not the only way Japan came into being. It wasn't just an island that birthed itself from the sea. The bulk of Japan was originally the coastline of what would become mainland Eurasia, and around 450 million years ago, it had only just started breaking off. In fact, we see that even as recently as 20,000 years ago, an extremely short amount of time in the grand scheme of things, Japan was still partly attached to the mainland. And now, let's think culturally. Johto is based on Kansai, and both are very traditional in their ways. And in the grand evolution of culture, traditional Japanese culture is basically what happens when you take traditional Chinese culture and isolate it for several centuries. Even their alphabet, to extremely oversimplify the evolution of language is just Chinese but different, literally taking the Chinese alphabet and just applying some different rules to it. So here's my thinking with both of these historic facts combined. Yeah, let's do some Chinese fossil Pokemon. Unlike Japan, China is a fossil hotspot after all. Fossils from the Cretaceous period especially. And back then, the land that would become Japan was a direct part of the land that would become China, so it's just a no-brainer. Just like me commissioning the extremely talented artist Virgilophus to bring these ideas to life. So enough introduction, we want a unique fossil Pokemon with Chinese elements that would also make sense in the Johto region and they need to not be dinosaurs. How about a Synapsid? Not many of those yet. Let's go for a Diictodon. They are extremely common globally, and China has found quite a few. And plus, this would make the Mon very unique among the other fossil Pokémon. 255 million years ago, these proto-mammalian synapses burrowed through the desert, eating roots and tubers, and are thought to have acted like many modern small mammals, like burrowing rodents or meerkats, which makes sense, as synapsids are more closely related to you and I than to dinosaurs and technically, modern mammals are also therapsid synapsids. Cynodonts specifically. Just looking at it, it looks like a reptilian-esque naked mole rat that has a beak and likes to play. It's kind of like a gross, wrinkly baby, so let's make that the base form of this Pokémon. A gross, wrinkly baby. This is Urdont. 
Don't! Don't, of course, means tooth, and it's also from Diectodont, the thing it's primarily based on. And being sort of proto-rodents, the name sounds somewhat like rodent without the R. Yeah, don't! Rodent. Yeah, kinda. The uh, or o oh, at the start, pulls from Chinese. I want all four of these new fossil Pokémon to incorporate Chinese into the name somehow. Uh, or o oh, in this case, means hungry. Possibly even grumpy from hunger. It's a very grumpy baby. Upset that it's not currently eating, it's gotta feed the those baby fat rolls, don't you know? And its little tusks resemble chopsticks. This ground rock type spends most of its time in tunnels and uses its dexterous tusks to grab food that its parent left by the entrance. But unlike how these synapsids were thought to have behaved, having some of the earliest examples of play, this mon is all serious, grumpy baby business all the time, doing a 180 on its origins. Which the other fossil mon will do too, you'll see. Udant has a lot of growing to do, and there's no way for its parents to possibly forage for enough food to feed it and itself. And so, when evolving into Suasasaur, it gains the tools needed for some early agriculture. Suasasaur! Suasasaur now pulls mainly from the related Lystrosaurus, which is a Dicynodont therapsid, just like Diectodon, and it's so, so much uglier, and it's tired, it's exhausted, and it can't sleep because it has work to do, and it has the insomnia ability. Its long tusks resemble the Chinese seed drill, and even though Suasasaur here clearly has sharp teeth in its mouth, Lystrosauruses only had their two big tusks and their beak-like mouth to help them eat. Suasasaur's underbelly is a heavy iron plow, just like how Lystrosaurus had four limbs that were even biggerer and musclier than the hind limbs. And thus it appears that it was powerful when it came to digging, and it nested in burrow which is perfect for our digging, gardening friend here. And the cherry on top of all of this is that Suasasaur carries seedlings on its back, akin to the Chinese field mill. China has always been an agricultural powerhouse, and as such, invented a lot of the farming tools that we still use today. But these field mills were mechanical marvels. Through only the turning of wheels as they were pulled, they were able to spread water, seedlings, and fertilizer across the field and other kinds of them were able to completely husk and mill rice on their own. And this is around the year 200 to 350, by the way. Similar technology wouldn't appear in Europe for over a thousand years. And the Chinese seed drill is among China's most important inventions. It's a plow that also buries seeds in the ground as it plows. And it was invented over 3,500 years ago. And it directly contributed to their invention of the row crop farming method, where crops are planted in rows instead of the seedlings being scattered about randomly. It's a method still heavily used today. And in the Eastern Pokémon world, it was done by Suasasaurs constantly. All work, all the time. That's why they sway. And that's why they're so sore. But the name also sounds a bit like Lystrosaur. And sway is Chinese for tired, exhausted, weary, or overworked. Honestly, it's too perfect. So sore! Sore. On top of moves like Dig, Earthquake, and Bulldoze, they also have a signature ground-type move similar to Rototiller upon evolving. Rototiller raises the attack and special attack of Grass-type Pokémon, and that's it. But Suasasaur's Plow Charge does that and damages an opponent as it plowed right into them, and if the opponent is Rock or Ground-type, the damage is increased. Those plows are powerful, and it also knows quite a few grass moves too, like Leech Seed and Seed Bomb, so good coverage against water types. So sore! And just like the Diectodon, Lystrosauruses were ridiculously prolific. In the early Triassic period, they were by far the most common terrestrial vertebrates, accounting for as many as 95% of the total individuals in some fossil beds. Which is exactly why Suasasaur have so many babies, like so many, to reference just how ridiculously common and prolific Diectodons and Lystrosauruses were. And that's also part of why Suasasaur's eyes are so tired. It has a lot of mouths to feed. It's going to need a lot of hard work and dedication, which of course also references East Asian work culture. Oof.
And all this work is also why all this hair on its back has more than just a few sprouts in it. Some of the seeds it spends its time spreading are actually growing out of it because it digs in the ground all day. It's too busy planting and harvesting plants for its mini babies to even worry about trivial things like keeping its fur clean. So of course, sometimes some seeds get stuck and start growing. And uh... I'm gonna let you all in on a little secret. I gave it fur on its back because I could have swore that I read somewhere in the last few years that we recently discovered that a lot of synapsids had fur or proto-fur because they are proto-mammals, but uh... It turns out they didn't. Yeah, neither Lystrosaurus or Diictodon had fur, and the oldest unambiguous proof of fur on any synapsid are in the Docodonta, which were rat-like almost mammals that were closely related to the first true mammals. But they occurred much later in time than either Lystrosaurus or Diictodon. But not to fear! As I mentioned earlier, mammals are also technically synapsids, and if you can't tell by my illustrious locks, plenty of mammals have hair and fur. So we'll attribute this fur to modern mammals like meerkats and the feeler hairs on naked mole rats and such. But now, another thing I like to think about is why a fossil Pokémon is a fossil Pokémon specifically, as opposed to just a regular Pokémon based on an extinct thing. I mean, there's plenty of those. So what's so special here? Well, along with its prolificness, making its fossils extremely common around the world, the discovery of Lystrosaurus fossils at Colsac Bluff in the Transantarctic Mountains in the late 1980s helped support the hypothesis of plate tectonics and strengthen the theory. Since Lystrosaurus had already been found in the Lower Triassic of Southern Africa as well as India and China, you could easily use that as evidence to say that these areas were once all right next to each other, but they moved because of plate tectonics. You see, at the time, nobody Nobody believed it. So BAM! They helped us understand the past. Now then, we took these ancient creatures that were thought to have played plenty and flipped the script, making them work 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 and serious grumpy baby all the time. So let's do the opposite for the other fossil mon. Some species known for always working like drones, but we'll have them play non-stop instead. And we start with Toyin! Its whole body is a toy! Those spinny drum rattle things! Yeah! Those were invented in China, by the way, and the yin in its name pulls from the Chinese word for silver because it's based on a silverfish, which themselves look almost like the early stages of many other insects, like a little nymph. Oh yeah, and because they are bugs, not fish as the name implies, they just happen to move similarly to fish, hence the name, um, it's bug rock type, but my favorite fun fact about silverfish is that they really are living fossils themselves. They haven't changed in roughly 400 million years. Talk about ancient. Toyin's body is partially encased with amber, fossilized tree resin. Of course, to reference the mosquito in amber that started Jurassic Park, and that already exists in Pokemon too. It's the thing you revive Aerodactyl from. But perhaps this is the Pokemon that was in that amber, hmm? That would solve the mystery of why there's a real-life mosquito in Pokémon. You're right! In this case, though, the amber tree sap is not fully fossilized yet, only partially. It's still got some sweetness left to it. So this mon doesn't have to worry about food because it's already covered in it. Sweet, sweet tree sap. And its tiny little baby wings are shaped like little kites because that's another toy that was invented in China, all the way back in 200 BCE at least. And to more perfectly link this guy up to Johto, it turns out that essential oil from Japanese cedar, which grows across Kansai, and even parts of China, is the number one silverfish repellent. Yeah, they had such a problem with silverfish in the area, they invented repellent for it. They are a menace, admittedly. They love eating paper, as it sort of pre-processes the cellulose and polysaccharides in wood for them. And paper itself was also invented in China, so yeah, East Asia's gonna have a problem with them. Now then, let's evolve it and go even deeper into the theme of play, and make it based on an animal known solely for their dedication to always be working. Let's do an ancient ant. Actually, forget just calling it ancient. Take a look at this. The Rhinognatha hirsti is the oldest known insect, and it looks like a cross between an ant and a silverfish, so that's already perfect. We'll take some elements from that and apply it to the very first ant, which we know about because it was trapped in amber, of course. This is the Keratomyromax ellenbergeri which has such weird mandibles. 
but they do look perfect for holding a toy. So, this is Mantium. Mantium. Manti. I played with the name Dominant also because of the domino butt. However, it also sounds too much like Dominant, which it very much is not. It's a playful ant. This name has the word ant in it, of course, but it also pulls in Ma, the Chinese word for ant. And it also contains Latin's Atium, which is a word that we don't really have a direct translation for, as its meaning sort of encompasses fun, play, enjoyment, relaxing, leisurely time, and more. Basically, it's a word that means happy in Reducing, not work. Yeah, we'll go with that. But yes, it's butt. Dominoes were also invented in China, as was porcelain, which its body is made from, so it's fragile and cracks over time, revealing the glowing resin inside of its body, making it resemble kintsugi the Japanese practice of repairing broken pottery with gold. It carries around this spinning top that's carved from wood or stone. It plays with it so much that it breaks and often has to make new ones. It will hold the top inside of its uniquely built mandibles and horns and use its very dexterous antenna to spin it rapidly until it puts it on the ground and sends it rolling forward almost like a Beyblade on its side. But specifically, this top is based on the Diabolo Yo-Yo, another ancient Chinese toy and easily one of the most popular. Spinning this detached yo-yo between two sticks that are tied together lets you pull off some impressive tricks and attacks. Its signature move is Whack-A-Yo, a very silly and fun name, like Whack-A-Mole but yo-yo. This rock-type move launches the yo-yo forward to deliver a big, ranged wallop, dealing physical damage but without making contact, and it hits two to four times, and if there are multiple opponents, then it alternates between who it hits also. It's just having fun! Speaking of, here's a fun thing. Looking at Mantium, it has almost futuristic vibes, with the clean white color and its kite wing and the eye lenses refracting light in this way. It doesn't seem all that fossily. Well, that was done on purpose. We're playing with the ancient advanced civilization trope. The idea that long before written history, there was some civilization with technology tens of thousands of years more advanced. Sometimes even more advanced than ours today. Like medieval Europe looking back on ancient Rome. Or like History Channel's ancient alien type stuff, which is sometimes attributed to the ancient Japanese Yomon civilization. And is also a good nod to the fact that in many ways, a lot of ancient and medieval East Asian civilizations were so much more advanced than their European counterparts at the time. But to not get too into that, the idea here with this Mon is that its ancestors got so advanced that their descendants no longer had to work to survive. They developed the ability to synthesize nutrients within. These wings act almost like satellite solar panels, and they use the energy from the sun and the wind around them to generate energy stores inside of them in the form of resin. So now they have no responsibilities. They just play and relax all the time. But of course, like a lot of ancient lost civilizations, they were distracted with play and did not prepare for the impending catastrophe which led to their extinction. Mantium? Yes, it's true. They are all dead and have been for millions of years. But here's a fun idea. How about you get little cosmetic differences? The domino number can be different on different Mantium. Mantium! Yeah, I figured you'd like that. Plus, Johto having a whole time travel side quest with Celebi is also a part of what led us to this idea. A fossil mon that combines ancient and future elements. I like it. And plus, ants themselves already have pretty advanced societies for how simple tiny-brained they are. So now, as a set of Johto fossil Pokémon, we've got a workaholic species that's now all about play, and a playful species that's now all about work. We've got the first ants and insects, and we've got some proto-mammals. And they all incorporate Chinese inventions into their designs because during the time period they'd be from, Japan was full-on a part of Asia's mainland. And I like them. I really like how these turned out. But what do you think? What would you change about them? Let me know down below and never stop using your noggin. And if you haven't seen what we did for Alola or Paldea, check out those videos next. Thanks for watching.